Hi, how are you doing today? My name is Lewis Carroll, and I wanted to talk to you about something that I think is very, very interesting in the male body, and that's progesterone. Uh, progesterone is sometimes thought of as a female hormone, but it's present in male bodies too, and it's extremely important in both bodies. Progesterone in men is primarily made in the testicles, and there's a little bit made in the, in the uh, adrenal glands. Um, what it does, it's, it's very, very brain protective. It protects your nervous system. It's responsible for your uh, libido. It really helps with libido and erectile strength. And if it gets out of balance with estradiol, then it, it's uh, referred to as being estrogen dominant. Uh, this is a, a phrase that was coined by Dr. Lee, who, uh, who's, been, who's done a lot of work in this area. Uh, estrogen dominance is where you simply have a lot more estradiol than, than progesterone. Uh, progesterone needs to be balanced with it. Um, there are ways to bring it up naturally. Uh, uh, vitamin B6 is reported to be useful for that, zinc. Uh, the other method is um, cream, just uh, progesterone cream. And I'm not talking about the uh, progestins, that is a, a pharmaceutical product uh, that's not natural in the body, but bioidentical cream. Uh, bioidentical cream uh, is, is that stuff is made from yams, soy, uh, but the way it's made, it, it's bioidentical, it comes in a cream, you can buy it over the counter, it's fairly cheap, and, uh, and that will bring it right up. You simply rub it, uh, if you're a man, you're going to rub it in the scrotum area and, uh, and bring your progesterone up. Uh, progesterone is not made in large amounts in the male body, probably you know 10 to 15 milligrams per day, so you'll want to get that type of a dose if you want to bring it up. Uh, the reason why you'd want to bring it up is really the cool part about progesterone. Uh, and it has to do with how the hypothalamus detects testosterone. Uh, the interesting thing is the hypothalamus seems to look at estradiol levels in order to regulate your testosterone levels. It doesn't look at testosterone directly, so it looks at estradiol levels. And estradiol is made from testosterone. There's a certain amount of estradiol that's converted in, from testosterone into estradiol. So the hypothalamus looks at the estradiol level, and if you have high levels of estradiol, the hypothalamus says, well, we got too much estradiol, we must be making too much testosterone, because that's the precursor. So it stops putting out nearly as much gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which then limits the amount of luteinizing hormone coming from the pituitary gland, and your testosterone drops. And that's a bad deal for men. It's just part of that aging process that we don't like. Um, if you had very low estradiol levels, the hypothalamus would look at that situation and say, well, we must not be making enough testosterone. And it then puts out more gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which results in more luteinizing hormone from the pituitary gland, and the Leydig cells get into high gear and start making more testosterone. So once you know that mechanism, <clears throat> uh, then at least you've got a handle. You can figure out how to maybe regulate this. And the thing that regulates that or helps to regulate it is progesterone. And this is what I think is fascinating. Progesterone is, is an antagonist for estradiol. So uh, typically if you can raise your progesterone levels up, you'll probably cut your estradiol levels down. Uh, that's the theory. Okay. Um, so if you were to raise your progesterone levels, for instance, by using a cream, you would then reduce estradiol levels and by reducing estradiol levels, that would trigger the hypothalamus into creating more gonadotropin-releasing hormone, uh, effectively raising your testosterone levels. So there's a domino effect going on here among these three hormones, and by recognizing this mechanism, you can actually dial your testosterone up to a higher level simply by uh, using a little exogenous progesterone cream. And I, I just think this is fascinating. Um, if you are aging and you are gaining fat, and uh, you know, some of the things, if you're low on progesterone, some of the um, side effects of that, or some of the effects of low progesterone, is going to be a low libido, uh, hair loss, uh, weight gain, uh, fatigue, depression, uh, the possibility of gynecomastia because of too much estradiol being unchecked by. Uh, by progesterone, erectile dysfunction, muscle loss. Uh, these are all things that we think are due to just a sedentary lifestyle, and of course that is going to contribute to it, but uh, uh, a reduction
reduction in progesterone will manifest as those things. Okay, so I'll, I'll uh, elaborate on libido a little bit more. This is kind of interesting, but if you look at the female cycle, uh, right after ovulation, when the, uh, the egg is released from the ovary, uh, estrogen levels rise up in, in, in a female along with the progesterone levels. And, that, and the progesterone levels stay up high for another 10 to 12, 14 days uh, until menstruation sets in. But during that two weeks, when, or the almost, you know, the close to two weeks when, when the female has ovulated, uh, generally their uh, libido is up. And it's, it's, uh, it's interesting that nature has designed the female that way, you know, and it, and it makes perfect sense. You know, the egg is coming down the fallopian tube, it's ready for fertilization, and uh, the female is much more receptive to uh, sexual advances at that point. Progesterone seems to do that. Um, and it works the same way in men. If, um, you know, if you find that your sexual, you know, your libido, for instance, is... Uh, not what it used to be, you'd want to look at progesterone because progesterone does exactly the same thing in men. It raises up your desire to, to be with the opposite sex. So in, in that respect, it's, it's, it's great for libido. Uh, and it's also very good for erectile strength. If you raise your progesterone levels, you'll probably notice that erectile strength has been uh, significantly improved. And if you think about it, if you're a male with male pattern baldness, and let's say this hits you in your, uh, your 30s, early 30s, late 20s. Um, this is about the time when progesterone starts to decline. And when progesterone declines, uh, DHT, dihydrotestosterone production, tends to rise up a little bit. Because the thing that progesterone does is it does more than just limits estradiol. It also limits dihydrotestosterone production. So progesterone is very, very interesting. If you have enough of it, I think it could help to ward off male pattern baldness. It wards off the effects of estradiol, which is, you know, as we know, is going to be weight gain, prostate issues, uh, things of that nature, uh, breast cancers. Uh, too much estradiol in the male body is a, is a really bad deal. And it's something that affects all of us as we age. Uh, but progesterone is one of those things that you can use to control DHT, control estradiol, and raise your testosterone levels, and provided you, you get the right physiologic dose, uh, you can ward off, you can slow down the aging process. And that's why I think progesterone is just a, a fascinating hormone, and it's definitely something you want to look at when you're looking at uh, restoring your hormone profile. Um, as some of you know, I've worked very hard on the time machine uh, to, uh, it's a hormone rejuvenator, and there are ingredients in there that promote progesterone. Uh, for some of us, it may not be enough, and so you go to the cream. That's certainly a, a possibility. But getting progesterone right helps to restore your hormone, your full hormone, all of your hormones, to a proper profile. And it's a great anti-aging technique. Thanks for watching.